if I sort of admitted to like not feeling well, struggling, then it would be like I was admitting defeat. But I think it, it was sort of a real challenge, especially because of how young we were, to like know what to do. You know, obviously none of us had ever gone through anything like that. Let's talk about chronic illness. Welcome to episode two of Let's Talk About Chronic Illness. We're going to be talking about friendship today. And I have two guests with me today, two of my closest friends. So would you like to introduce yourself? So my name's Izzy. Um, I'm 19. Becca and I have known each other for about five years through school. And I'm Bliss. I'm also 19 and know Becca through school. I've known her seven years. And for anyone who doesn't know, I'm Becca. I'm also 19. <laughs> um, and I have a chronic illness called ME, which stands for myalgic encephalomyelitis, um, and is also known as chronic fatigue syndrome. So you've both known me before I was ill, and then since I've been ill. Yeah. So the first question was, does it ever become an issue that your friend is ill? I think it's because I knew you before you were ill and you were so nice to me because you were you were my buddy we were buddied up together when I joined the school and I remember when you first got ill I think um, you were quite apprehensive to tell me because you were worried it would affect our, our friendship mm -hmm. and I think I just thought absolutely no way because you've been so lovely to me yeah I agree I wouldn't say it was an issue like it obviously changed some things and like made some things harder but like was not an issue at all I think if it's a true friendship like it's not it's never gonna be a problem if you're ill you know yeah we're never gonna get annoyed at you and be like oh well now you're ill so we're not gonna be friends anymore yeah that would the worst person ever <laughs> yeah I think that is like a true testament to our friendship is that there weren't any like conditions for friendship in. is do you ever see the difference I would say yes we see the difference like because I knew you before and I'd known you like a little while before mm -hmm. obviously I sort of like watched the change like your energy levels and everything happen and what you were able to do and I don't think you as a person have changed. It's just like the way, you know, you had to live changed or the way you had to do things changed. Yeah. Um, how do you find things that are mutually enjoyable to do together without increasing or impacting fatigue too much? So I think that's something that we've all sort of done together. It's just sort of like I always really appreciated the fact that you have always been very understanding about like stuff that I can't do so you're always sort of like quite willing just to like come over and just sit and chat for an hour and do stuff that I'm more able to do so I think it's been relatively easy to find stuff that is mutually enjoyable I think from my point of view I don't know about what you guys think <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Um, like, you know, sometimes it's just, you know, you wouldn't necessarily want to do anything more anyway than just sit down, chat or watch a movie, do something like that. It almost like takes the pressure off to always find something to do. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm meeting other friends, sometimes there's that pressure of like, oh, what will we do this time? Because last time we got coffee, so this time we have to do something different yeah i don't think it's ever been an issue especially because like you can say oh that's what you feel capable of doing today yeah and nothing else it means that i don't have to think about what we're going to do because i hate making decisions <laughs> yeah another question was do you ever struggle to know what to do if i suddenly feel ill i would say in the beginning maybe but then I think it really helped that you explained things and especially through your YouTube videos as well. Those definitely helped. And yeah, I think it's um, definitely got easier over time to know what to do. 
Um, but in the beginning, it was quite hard because, um, you know, it was kind of this new thing that we hadn't really seen before and you hadn't been able, you haven't, you hadn't dealt with it before. So yeah. um, it almost felt, you know, quite scary in a way, but it's definitely got easier. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think at the beginning it was particularly hard because, um, you know, like things would happen like when we we're at school or something and... I mean, I completely understand you never wanted help. Um, but the thing is, sometimes, you know, you kind of needed like the nurse to come or someone to be there who actually knew what they were doing. Um, and I think that was also really hard is to know when, like when to run and get the nurse when we were at school and when not to. And also I think it's different because we were at school. So we're in a bit of a different like environment. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, because we were all a bit younger. Mm -hmm. Um, and now that would be completely different also because I think that you sort of have more understanding now because it's not so new um, yeah. and also because you've explained to us now what you know what to do and it's like when you had the sort of like scale of um, of like pain and things that we could all understand so we kind of knew then mm -hmm. um, sometimes it is a struggle to like know what to do yeah uh, but I think the important thing is like we were just trying our best to sort of support you and I think you saw that yeah. and so even if we did the wrong thing or anything like you could understand why we mm -hmm. did that. yeah definitely like yeah I've always really appreciated like everything that you guys have done yeah I, ha I had a feeling that we were that we were going to start talking about the fact that I'm really bad at accepting help I'm much better at it now mm. but I think it was just sort of always this thing of yeah, like, especially at the beginning, I didn't really fully understand it either. And it was scary for me as it was for everyone else. And I think I was just so desperate to just like be normal and not like be different to everyone else. And I hate like being the centre of attention. So sort of wanting to just like try and just like deal with everything myself, I think is why I was so bad at like accepting help because I just wanted to like prove a point like almost to myself of I can do this by myself but then I learned over time that it doesn't work like that <laughs> and I think also I mean kind of being at school when there was everyone there made that even harder because you just don't want to be ill in front of everyone yeah yeah so I think asking for help is more difficult than just ignoring it because it's um, that almost, yeah, no, it, mu mu it must feel kind of really defeating almost. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say that I think, yeah, it sort of felt like if I asked for help, if I sort of admitted to, like, not feeling well, struggling, then it would be like I was admitting defeat and I was yeah. letting, like, the illness win. Mm. But I sort of realised over time that actually by saying like by like acknowledging that you need help then that's actually not letting the illness win because then you can get the help that you need um is it difficult seeing friends do what you want to do or used to do and how do you deal with that so i think definitely that's something that i've sort of already touched on a bit is like not wanting to be different and i think especially once we got into like sick form and I was like missing a lot of school and then eventually just like wasn't in school at all because I got too ill. I think it was hard sort of seeing everyone else still going to school and like doing their A-levels. And I think like with the May ball, like obviously I did manage to come for like a few minutes to have a couple of photos. But then I think like the rest of that evening and like into the next day sort of seeing on social media like everyone's like insta stories and stuff and everything like that I think that was hard for me because it just sort of reminded me that I'm different and that I can't do the same things as everyone else and yeah I think that's definitely something that I've struggled with but then I think the way that I deal with that is then doing stuff that we can do together so yeah, like hanging out, watching Glee, watching Gavin and Stacey, something like that, that then just makes me feel a bit more normal. I think that's sort of how I deal with that. 
Um, how do you cope with the fact that you can't see what I'm going through because it's invisible? I think I find it really hard, especially at the beginning. You know, I always remember a conversation we once had and I said, you know, I wish I could go through what you're going through, you know, for a day, a week, just so I know what it's like. Because I think it's, um, it's hard, especially you know, what we said earlier, we don't know, um, you know, exactly when you might be feeling worse. Um, yeah, I think that's something I really struggled with because I didn't know always what to say. And um, yeah, no, I, I, I found that hard, but it's getting a bit easier now. I think I just knew that um, even though I didn't understand, you know, I still had to, you know, I was still there for you and I just had to try my best. Yeah, I completely agree. I, but although actually the one thing I would say is I think at the very, very beginning, it was almost easier because there were sort of, even though it was still invisible, there were some visible things like when your wrists were weak, your ankles were weak. So it, we could kind of see that and then be like, okay, now we know she's not feeling well or it was sort of in a way more visible when you were particularly tired because mm -hmm. we were so used to seeing you like full of energy and, um, and everything like before. And then I think as things sort of developed, it got really, really hard. It, like Izzy said, like as it got a bit sort of later on, we all got a bit older, we sort of got more used to it. It got easy. It's still really difficult, but it got easier. To, mm -hmm. Also, I think because you say more when you're tired now. Yeah, yeah. Because um, otherwise, I mean, I'd be completely lost if <laughs> it, it is invisible. So even though sometimes we can tell you're tired, sometimes we just have no idea. I mean, all the time we have no idea what you're going through, so yeah but i think it sort of goes both ways because obviously yeah like you guys can't fully see what i'm going through being the one who's ill but then i can't see how like you guys are feeling about it and it's something that i sort of struggle with as well is sort of knowing like if i'm asking for too much help if i'm not asking for enough help like and not wanting to be a burden so like my friends and not wanting to constantly ask you for too much help, but then also not wanting to be really stubborn and not ask for yeah. it at all. So I think, yeah, it does sort of go both ways. Um, so we've sort of already talked about this a bit, but next question is how was your friendship challenged? Like you were going through something so new um, and none of us, I mean, being barely 15, like we didn't know what to do. Um, and I think so in a way that challenged it because I didn't want to go against what you'd said but then sometimes I mean I remember at least one time you know you were pretty much fainting and telling me not to get the nurse I think it, it was sort of a real challenge especially because of how young we were to like know what to do which we already like talked about um, and then I think like as you said as we got a bit older and sort of sixth form happened and like exams and sort of going away to uni and everything I think for me at least like I find it sometimes hard I don't want to talk too much about the things that like you want to do it's like when you know you asked me after the May ball how it was but I didn't want and I wanted to tell you of course I wanted to tell you but in the way I I didn't want to tell you everything because I knew how you were what I sort of knew a little bit about how you were feeling about it yeah uh, so I think it's a, it's a challenge that's not to say it's a problem, um, but I think sometimes that's difficult to know sort of how much to say, because I know you want to know some of it and everything, but I equally, I don't want to be sort of rubbing it in your face if you are feeling like you're missing out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I think because it wasn't, you know, necessary, it wasn't a normal situation to be in, I think, it, and you know obviously none of us had ever gone through anything like that in terms of a friendship before it definitely added on extra challenges but I think you know after a while when we learned how to cope with that and you know realize it's not you know just because it might be a little bit different it doesn't you know it doesn't change you as a person and it's not 
um, yeah, it's just a different way of, of going about a friendship. So, yeah. Yeah, and I think the key thing that has sort of come up in this conversation a lot is the fact that we were so young. I'll have people sort of say to me like, oh, wow, I can't believe you got ill so young. That must have been so hard. But it's like, yes, it was. But also it's really hard on like you guys, it's really hard on all my friends. Like we were all really young. We all didn't really understand what was going on. It was hard for everyone. I think in a way, the fact that we were still young and at school, I, in a way, as much as it made it harder, in a way it also made it easier because if we didn't know what to do, you know, there was the nurse on site who did know kind of what to do. Like, I think in a way we were lucky to have that sort of support. The fact that we were at a school, there were people we could go to. Yeah. Um, and also like in a quite controlled environment. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing the same people every day and sort of things like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, I think if it had happened later on, um, I don't know, it almost would have been more difficult because now, um, you know, we're kind of going off in different directions. So, but at the start, we were still seeing each other virtually every single day at school. We had lessons together. So that still brought us closer together. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah I agree with that because we were together every single day. Mm -hmm. You know, we were there when it started we were there for you know when you weren't feeling good we were there mm -hmm. whereas now I think if it, especially if it had happened sort of like when we like I've just gone off to uni and we're all going in different directions we wouldn't have been able to be there for your like sort of worst moments at the beginning if mm -hmm. it started now obviously we still can't be there for your worst moments now mm -hmm. um but yeah I think in a way it did bring us all closer to be there at the beginning like as you said yeah yeah definitely yeah and I guess the fact that you saw and you were there for my worst moments at the beginning means that now even that you even though like you're not necessarily with me for my worst moments you sort of have an understanding of what the worst moments are because you've seen them previously mm -hmm. so, yeah yeah and I do think yeah it sort of has brought us all closer together did you struggle to know how to act around me in the beginning or even now yeah I, I think it was quite hard because nobody really knew what to say and you know you didn't really know what was happening so that must have been really scary for you um so I think it was hard to a certain extent but then we just kind of realized that it's not you know it's not, it's not the end of the world it's mm. kind of just you know it's something that you get on with you're still the same person yeah I agree I kind of think at the beginning for me at least because I'd known you for like quite a while it was kind of like it didn't change anything about how I was going to act around you it would have been the same you know if I had a friend that broke their leg I would have been there for them I would have helped them get from A to B but I think as it got on a bit I mean, like we already touched on before, it wasn't like struggling how to act around you, but knowing what to say or what not to say. Um, like, I think I started like overthinking what I would say because I didn't want to say something wrong. I didn't want to upset you or I didn't want to, I don't know. I just didn't know exactly what to do. And then you sort of get to a point where you're like, but if I say something wrong, you're just going to, you're just going to be like, oh, it's just, she's just made a mistake or whatever. Um, and I'm brilliant at overthinking, so I definitely went through a phase of overthinking how I was, like, what I would say to you or whatever. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily call it a struggle. Um, maybe at the beginning, in a way, it was. Yeah. I think, for me, sometimes I struggled to know how to act around you, if that makes sense. Like, but yeah, like, as I said, it's not really a struggle, but more of, like, I found myself sort of overthinking like how much I should tell you or how much it shouldn't tell you and I think yeah that sort of comes back to like me saying when I need help and stuff is I be overthinking like should I tell them I need help or should I just try and get on with it myself and I think even still now sometimes it's like a bit of a 
not a struggle, but a bit hard sometimes knowing how to act, whether I should sort of try and put on like a front of being absolutely fine when inside I'm in tons of pain and feeling absolutely awful or whether I should just be really honest and mm. say. So yeah, I think that's sort of, again, a lot of these things do sort of go both ways. I mean, I think what we can tell from like this conversation is kind of communication was the sort of biggest thing. And I think if there's anyone sort of, I guess that there are people watching your videos that might be going through similar situations or might be friends with people going through similar situations. And I think the important thing is like, if you're, if it's really a friend of yours who's going through you know, chronic illness or anything that might be related, it's okay for them to just say to you and you can say to them, you know, like you can be completely honest with you. Cause like, honestly, Becca, like we've been around you when you have been at your worst. Yeah. So the fact that you, I mean, it's, it's completely natural to want to put up a barrier, but at the same time, we have seen you in every state <laughs> known to man, you know, like we've, we've seen you in tears, we've seen you, um, you know, we've equally seen you full of energy and very, very happy or really excited and everything. So I think that the important thing is it's, it is okay to say to people, and it's okay, it's, I think equally it's okay for people if you're like friends with someone to say, I don't know how... I should deal with this mm -hmm. how would you like me to to deal with this or what can I do to help mm -hmm. yeah I think uh, communication is absolutely the key thing and yeah not yeah from both from both sides of it not being afraid to ask questions basically like, I don't think many people can say that a friend of theirs has written them a song like that's, it's just amazing really, especially considering the fact that, you know, when you wrote it, when you were recording it, you know, you were probably going through a really, really hard time, but you still did it because you were an amazing friend. Like that had, you know, it didn't have anything to do with what you were going through. Izzy's right, that's the, that's the basis of this, is the fact that you've been an amazing friend to us over the years despite you know anything you were going through that really hasn't affected how you were towards us mm -hmm. you know it's like I was messaging you the other day and I think I said like I had a rough day or I was going through something and you were still saying oh let me know if there's anything I can do even though I know that you were sort of exhausted and ha also having a rough day and you both are incredible incredible friends like I don't think that I could have asked for better friends to have sort of going through this whole thing you yeah you've both been amazing and I've really appreciated the fact that you haven't really treated me differently because I'm ill or anything and it's not like a friendship that has kept going either because I'm ill or in spite of the fact that I'm ill it's like that isn't even an issue it's just that we're great friends and it's lovely you both very much for any time thank you for having us i'm, I'm sad that this time didn't involve baking though like last time <laughs>